Today I'm going to show you guys how to use sends, also known as aux sends. And we're going to use these to route signal to our effects buses like reverb and delay. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna, and as always, we are here at my studio, True Sound Studios, and today I get to show you guys how to use sends, and sometimes it's referred to as an aux send. So here in Cakewalk Sonar, it's actually labeled as sends. So the sends is actually right underneath the effects bin and right above where you have the mute, solo, and record buttons. So sends are great because this is kind of like a duplicate output and this duplicate output is actually adjustable so we can pre or post fader this or dictate the amount of level that we want to send to a particular bus. So I typically use sends to send audio to my reverb, my delay, my drum room sound, and even sometimes for parallel compression. So this is something I use in my everyday productions. Um, without the sends, you know, I really don't know what I would do because I'd have to run so many effects plugins that my computer wouldn't be able to handle it. So there is another video that I actually released right before this one, and this is how to route audio to buses, but actually in a different way. Um, in the other video, we took the output and actually ran it to the bus. Today, we're actually gonna send audio from the sends and send it to a bus. So they are slightly different. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check out that video first, it might make this video make a little bit more sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and create these effects buses. So over here, I'm just gonna right click and go to insert stereo bus insert stereo bus, and we're just gonna make four of these. Um, why four? Four is kind of like the typical thing that I start every project out in. Um, it's just kind of like my common effects that I like to send, um, especially in a project like this, that it's kind of like a rock band setup. Okay, so our first bus we're gonna label as ER. ER is also known as early reflection, and it's gonna help add a little bit of life to things that are too dead. So the next bus we will create is reverb, and that's just gonna be kind of like your standard reverb. So over here, we're gonna go ahead and make this bus the drum room. So this is what we're gonna send pretty much our drums to, and this is gonna really give our dead drums some life. And then the last bus we're gonna create is delay, and I love adding delay, especially in stereo and like ping pong mode. Okay, so we have our four new buses that we created, ER, reverb, drum room, and delay. So. Up here in the effects bin, now we need to add the particular effect that we want. So up here, I'm gonna right click and we're gonna do insert audio effect, direct X. I'm gonna pick uh, this Sonitis one because hopefully you, you guys have, have this plugin if you have Cakewalk. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, I'm gonna take the reverb all the way down, the dry all the way down. We're gonna keep this, the ER, right where it is. I'm gonna take this high end and reduce it because I want this ER to not be as bright. And maybe we'll make the width about 150. Then for the reverb, I'm just gonna go back to that Sonitis one. Okay, and so for this one, we want reverb. So I wanna turn the dry once again down. This time we wanna turn the ER down and we'll move the reverb up. Uh, once again, try to make this reverb a little darker sounding. And you guys can choose the width, it doesn't really matter. And then for a drum room, now this I kind of have a very specific setting for. Um, we will get into another video on how to create some of these, um, some of these effects a little bit more in detail. So there is this, and this is using the Waves True Verb, and there's some compression and EQ on this. And then finally our delay, we're gonna go ahead and let's see, we'll. We'll take the Waves H delay, I kind of like this one. Set it to ping pong, put it to quarter notes. Our project is in 180 beats per minute, so we want to definitely match that. And we want our, definitely don't want any dry, we only want to hear this effect, so we're going to keep it on wet. And maybe I'll just play around with EQ a little bit to make it a little bit more fun. And then go ahead and close this. Okay, so now this is kind of where the fun gets into. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and solo just the drums. So right now we're just gonna play around with just the drums. So if we listen to the drums, totally dry. All 
Okay, so, you know, they sound good, but they're pretty dry. So first thing, we're going to come over here to our sends, right click, and down here where it says drum room, now we're going to click on that. So what that's going to do is separately from routing our drums to our master bus, we're essentially sending a duplicate signal from right here, our sends, over to the drum room bus. So we're using the aux send to send signal over to our drum room bus. Now, if I just solo just the overhead, take a listen to what it has done to our overhead channel. That's with it off. So now we've we've kind of made it sound like it's in a, a much bigger drum room. So obviously you can play around with the level of that. Let's probably reduce this. Turn it off. Okay, cool. So we added some life. That might be a little bit too much, but we got to listen to it in the mix. Now for kick drum, I generally don't add any drum room sound to my kick. I don't want it to be any boomier than it you know, might already be. So obviously you guys can do that if you want, or just maybe add just a little bit. So for this though, we will still create the drum room send. And this time we're just going to really back it down because I don't want a whole lot in there. So I'm going to go ahead and solo the kick. So that's probably enough, not much at all. And then over here to our snare drum, we'll solo the snare. And then once again, right click, send it to the drum room. That's off. So generally on the snare, we send a lot to that. It really helps um, bring out the life in the snare drum. And then the same thing for the toms. We'll just once again click that and we'll add about that much. So now let's just go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo all of our drums. And I'm actually going to come over here and mute um, the drum room bus so that you can hear it with all the drums with the drum room on and then also with it off. So what's great about using an aux send, we are dictating between all those different drum elements how much drum room. Now, opposed to before when we routed it from the outputs, the entire level, everything was going to that drum bus. Let's say um, for our snare drum, so let's just solo the snare. Maybe you want to add some delay to it. So we're going to come down, right click, delay. And so you see it's created yet another send, but now it's going also to the delay. So let's go ahead and listen to this. Soloed. I'll take the drum room off. So you can hear um, the ping pong is kind of creating some fun, you know, things that are going on left and right. So um, if we go ahead and just listen to all the drums with now that delay on the snare drum. Obviously, you know, that's something you're going to obviously want to have. I just want to show you how to use this. But, you know, you could back it off and uh, kind of dictate how much of that delay is sent. So I'm just going to go ahead and just delete that delay on that snare drum just so you guys can see all these plugins. So for our guitar, let's go ahead and add that ER. And you guys will hear what ER is going to do. And obviously we can dictate that level. Off. So that one's a little tough to hear. So, so what we actually can do now is we can come over and just solo our ER or our early reflection and unsolo our guitar. We can hear just what is sent to our ER bus.
So that's the sound it's actually adding to that guitar track. So watch, if I go ahead and, and back this down while it's playing, you're gonna hear less and less of that ER in the guitar. Because what I'm doing is I'm sending a duplicate signal from our guitar track to the ER, and the ER is adding that early reflection sound, and then that is being sent to the master bus. So because we're doing that, we can actually listen to what just what the effect is doing, which is sometimes nice because you know maybe the effect is too bright, it's too bassy, or you don't even know what it's doing. This is really nice because you can just solo just the effect and hear what it's doing to the actual instrument. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsolo that, and we'll just leave the ER maybe somewhere around there. So one other thing that I want to show you guys is kind of like a cool effect thing that um, you can use with Ascend. So this button right here, this one that is highlighted blue, is your pre and post button. Meaning when I go ahead and turn this guitar all the way down, it's actually going to dictate how much of this signal is being sent to the ER. So when I have this up full, whatever I've decided up here, this same amount of signal is being sent to here. But when I reduce this, it's actually gonna reduce the amount of ER that's being sent. So no matter what level I have this at, always the same amount of signal is being sent to the ER. And you want that because if you turn this guitar down five decibels and you forget about the send, um, you're gonna be still sending the same amount of signal to the uh, ER and you know maybe that's not what you wanted. So I generally keep these um, with it lit up blue like that on the post fader, but this is really cool. If you click this and you turn it to the white, so it's on the pre, so watch this. I can actually go ahead and for our guitar track, so if I go ahead and uh, mute all these guys and we just leave the guitar up, you're gonna hear what's gonna go on. I'm gonna turn this ER up all the way though, like this. Now go ahead and take a listen. So our signal is still being sent to our guitar bus and it's also being sent to the ER, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn down this fader. So maybe for some reason, the very beginning of the song, you want it to sound like it's really distant like that. What you can do is you can automate this fader to start out kind of like this. And then when everything comes in, you know, it sounds, it sounds fun. You know, it sounds like the guitars are real far away and then they get real close up to your face. So that's a really cool kind of trick you can do with the send with the pre and the post. Now, another thing you can actually do in the send is you can actually pan the signal. So maybe you have something, the guitar lead is to the very left and you want to only have maybe the reverb that you're sending to this lead all the way to the left, or maybe you want the lead to the left and you want the reverb all the way to the right to kind of help balance things out. You can also do that with your sends. So that's just one more option that you do have opposed to when we just sent the output just straight to a bus. And then last, we can just go ahead once again um, and we can come down here and maybe send some signal to just the reverb. So if we just listen to our guitars with the reverb, Obviously, that's way too much reverb for the for this song. That is really how you use sends. Now, there's one more thing that you can actually do is, so in the previous video, I showed you how to send drums to a parallel compression channel. And you can actually also do this with the sends. So I'll show you this really quick. So if I went ahead and just made drums P comp sends on all of these, we would then just send output from our overheads kick, snare, and toms, additionally to our drums P comp, that is just a little different way of routing to the drums parallel compression bus. Okay guys, so that is how you use sends in Cakewalk Sonar. So there is one more video if you guys wanna see a little bit more in depth 
how I process all these buses in a full track. There is a video called Routing Busing Tracks in Cakewalk Sonar. I will also include a link to that video in the description of this video. All right, guys, so I hope this video helped you guys out, and I hope it answers some questions on how to route audio to your sense. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.